Well, good evening, everybody. I'm Skip Etheridge. I want to welcome you to Extended Hands of God Highway Ministries. It's Tuesday night. Tonight we have a guest speaker. And uh, before we give it to the guest speaker, I'm going to play a song by Sister Catherine Ferguson. It's called Get Up in Jesus' Name. And after that, Pastor John English from Galloway Full Gospel in Springfield, Missouri, will introduce our special guest. Praise the Lord, what a way to start the service tonight. Man, what a blessing. What, what, a, what a wonderful blessing. Tonight I've got the privilege uh, to introduce our speaker. Uh, and, of course, I'm so proud of this young man. This is my son, Tyler. I'm proud of the young man that he is, the man of God that he is, and, and I'm proud of what he's doing tonight. So, Tyler, we're going to turn it over to you. God bless you. and. Uh, get your heart ready to receive a word from the Lord. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. I just want to thank everyone for letting me come on here tonight and uh, speak the word that God has given me. Um, I hope that it comes out well and that God really speaks to your heart. Um, I'd just like to go ahead and start off and pray. Dear Lord Father, I thank you for your love, your mercy, and grace, God. I thank you for tonight, God. I thank you for everyone that is listening, God. I thank you for giving me the opportunity to preach your word. Lord, I ask that you just get me out of the way, and Lord, let it be all you, God. I ask you just anoint me, Lord, that 
touch my lips of clay, God. Let there be the words that you want to be said and not me, God. I give you all the praise and all the glory. Amen. So I entitled my message tonight, um, Identity Crisis. I want to talk a little bit about uh, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah. I would imagine everyone here is uh, fairly familiar with the stories in the book of Daniel and about these three, these four Hebrew, Hebrew boys. Um, you know how Daniel got thrown into the lion's den for praying, and when they threw him into the den, then God shut the mouths of the lions and God protected him through the whole entire night. And then you have the story about the three Hebrew boys not bowing down to the false idol that Nebuchadnezzar set up. And when they didn't bow down to the, the false idol, the king got furious and threw them in, into a fiery furnace. And when he threw them in there, they said that there was a fourth person that appeared in the fire, and it looked like the Son of God. And they walked out perfectly fine and to the point where they didn't even smell like smoke. Those are the two, I think, one of the main stories in Daniel um, you know, I, I want to go to the Daniel chapter 1, verse 1 through 4. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, uh, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, into Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, into the hand of the part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, into the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. And the king spake to Aspenaz, the master of Enoch, that should bring certain children of Israel and the king's seed of his princes. Children whom was no blemish, well favored, and skillful in all wisdom, cunning in knowledge, and understanding science. Such had ability in them to stand in the king's palace in whom they might teach in learning the tongue of the Chaldeans. Now I'm going to jump down to verse 6. Now among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, and unto whom the prince of Enoch gave names, for he gave unto Daniel the name of Belteshazzar, and to Hananiah, Shadrach, and to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah of Abednego. And so what's going on here is that Nebuchadnezzar just captured Jerusalem, and he took the four Hebrew boys, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, from their home. Could you imagine what this must have been like? Could you imagine what was going through their minds at that moment? Being taken from your home and from your family? And I want to really point out verse 7 again, where they changed the names. For he gave to Daniel Belshazzar, and Hananiah Shadrach, and to Mishael Meshach, and Azariah Abednego. So not only being far from their home, being far from their families, taken to a place that they completely different, they had no idea about, but also going to the extreme and completely changing their name. You know, what really impresses me is that you can see through the rest of the book of Daniel that no matter what they got thrown at them or they got thrown into, they kept their faith. They stayed true to God. Ask yourself this question. If you had to go through what they went through, could you keep your relationship with God like they did? I mean, really, could you do it? Because some of these Christians nowadays, they can barely keep their Christianity because they got their wrong, their order wrong at McDonald's. I'm saying, I'm going to go back to the subject now. So I was curious why they went to this, to the extreme to change their names. Was it because they wanted to completely change their identity? Maybe it was to make them feel like they fit into this new place. You know, they just took them from their families and from their home, and maybe they can just fit in a little bit more with different names. So I got real curious at what the names that they were already given, you know. Uh, and so I looked up what their names meant in Hebrew. 
And so Daniel means in Hebrew is, God is my judge. Hananiah means Yahweh has been gracious. Michel is who is what God is. Azariah, Yahweh has helped. I would imagine, I was thinking about it, I would imagine they changed their names because it gave praises to the one true God. You know, I really like Michelle's name. Who is what God is? Let me tell you, there is none like him. There will never, ever be anyone that could compare to him. No one has compared to him. He has no rival. He has no equal. He is a king and kings and the Lord of lords. So I was curious um, what they changed their names to. Why did they how to change it? So maybe it, the definition to just completely change it. So I looked up what their names meant in the Babylonian. Belshazzar meant Bell will protect. Shadrach meant inspired by a coup. Meshach meant belonging to a coup. Abednego meant servant of Nego. And I looked up the names, I looked at a little more into them, and every single one of their names gave praises to a false god. So not only did they take them from their homes and from their families, but not only changed their names, but changed it to something that no longer praises our God. They try to change their identity. I would imagine the difficulties they must have had, how they must have felt torn between their original name and the new ones that, God, uh, that they were given, and how everyone called them these new names, but they knew deep down inside their real names. After reading about the names, I was thinking about the, the difficulties. I kind of thought how we deal with issues ourselves sometimes, kind of like this. And thinking about the names that God has given us and some of the names that he calls us by, but then also how the devil calls us names and how he tries to change our names. Just like Nebuchadnezzar, change the Hebrew boys' names. I was thinking about how the devil tries to change our names. I was thinking about how we really love God, but sometimes we let the devil whisper different names in our ears and how sometimes we start to live by it. And while we're trying to live for God, and if we don't stay diligent, the devil will continue to whisper in our ears, and he'll start calling us horrible names like pathetic, worthless, useless, and unworthy. And we start to, be to believe the names that the devil has given us. We get so lost and so caught up in all the different names that he says to us that we don't even know who we really are anymore. We know that God, we know what God says about us and what he tells us, but it's so easy to fall into the trap of the devil. And we start believing it, and then all of a sudden we are confused of who we really are. And it's like we end up in an identity crisis, torn between the different names we are given, not even sure who we are anymore, split between the truth and all the lies. We get so confused start and start to live by the what the devil says, or the things that he's given us, we get so far and get to the point that we forget what God says and what he has said about us. And the devil just keeps on and on and on until the point where we just want to give up. You know, honestly, I, I went through the exact same thing I'm talking to you about tonight. It was a few days after I preached on the line a few weeks ago. The devil started in. He started attacking my thoughts. He was saying that I wasn't called to preach. 
He was saying, you have no idea what you're doing. And I was trying to fight all these thoughts that he was putting in my head. I was praying, listening to some Christian music, trying everything just for it to stop. But he kept on and on. And this lasted for a while. And then not only was he talking about trying to get me off of my calling, but then he started on everything in my life. Uh, about stuff at work, thoughts with my friends and families. He was saying that I'm useless. They don't really care about me. He was saying that I'm pathetic. Not good enough. He's saying that I'm a joke and that I'll never live up to what I'm really supposed to be. And this lasted for a while, and it was going all day, every day, nonstop, about every little thing. It got to the point where I even started to believe the lies that he was telling me. It got so so bad that I couldn't even think straight anymore. It got to the point where I needed to start working on my sermon last week, and I had the subject that I wanted to talk to you about, but I had no idea what I was going to say. And I was thinking all week, I was thinking and praying, asking God, what am I supposed to say? I had no idea. And I was still dealing with everything that the devil has been telling me. I didn't know what I was going to say. And so I kept putting it off because I was believing the lies that the devil has told me. I was believing that if I'm called, and if I'm not called, then why even prepare? So I didn't even take the time to write my sermon. Then all of a sudden, I realized it was, it was Tuesday. And it was Tuesday evening, I wasn't prepared. So I rushed home right after work, and I started writing. Nothing was coming to me. I had no idea what I was going to say. I was just writing anything that every, and everything that was coming to my mind. Going as fast as I could to get ready for last Tuesday night. And I was thinking the entire time, if you can't even write a sermon, then how do you think you're called? The devil was attacking me. Just non-stop attacking me, even while I was writing the sermon. So there was a storm that was going on while I was trying to write my sermon. It was pouring down rain. The wind, the wind was blowing. It was a pretty crazy storm, actually. And I was, I was, whatever was going on, I was still writing, and my whole family was uh, watching the news that was going on to see what they were saying. And so the news started to say it was getting really bad and that there was tornadoes all around us and that there was a tornado warning coming our way. It was a crazy night. So the sirens started to go off. I'm still still sitting there riding away. My dad comes up to me while I was riding. He says, it's getting pretty bad. We may have to go soon. I didn't say anything, but I was thinking, but I have to finish. I was like, no, I can't. I have to finish. I have to finish my sermon. I'm not done. So I was writing a little more than he came up to me a little bit later and he said, it's time to go. I said, yes, sir. All right. And then my whole family loaded up in the truck. And yes, we even did bring all three dogs. But while we're, while the sirens were going off, we're driving, uh, and it was pouring down rain. And the wind was crazy. It was just, it was crazy. Um, but I couldn't help to keep thinking about my sermon. And I was pretty upset that I couldn't finish. And the devil started in on me again. He said, if you can't even finish your sermon, then how do you think you'll ever preach? And honestly, it was it was getting to it was getting to me pretty bad. So we got to my grandpa's house, and 
that's where the shelter was. And so we're sitting there for a while watching the news, keep you know, keeping track. The sirens are still going off. And it, it was starting to get late, and the storm was still going on. And my dad at one point looked at me and asked, are you going to preach tonight? And I sat there for a second. And then I said, no, I can't. I'm not ready. I never finished. He said, okay, well, I'll just let him know that you can't. And so I said, okay. And so right after that, it was at that point where everything just fell apart. Every lie that the devil has told me, I started believing. I was like, that's it. I'm not calling. I can't do it. I got it wrong, God. He didn't call me. I thought it was over. I said, forget it. I was believing that I was a failure. A failure at everything. And I mean everything. I believe the lie that I was worthless, that I was useless, pathetic, and every other name the devil was calling me. I was I was done. I was ready to give up. I was ready to come preaching. I was I just said forget it. And so we and so we finally got back home and uh the storm finally calmed down after a little while. Don't get me wrong, there was still a storm going on and it was still kind of bad, but the tornadoes kind of went away and stuff. So once everything kind of calmed down in the house, I sat on the couch and my dad was in the chair across from it. And I was to the point of tears. I looked at my dad and said, I'm a failure. He looked at me all confused and he said, what do you mean? I said, I couldn't preach tonight. I didn't have anything ready. I failed. I failed God. I'm just a failure. He said, no, 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 you're not. And so we talked a little bit more about that. And then he said, you know what? I don't think you're actually supposed to preach tonight at all. Then he said, I think you need to go through this yourself so you can actually preach it. And, you know, he read, uh, pre-read the little sermon that I had for that night. The little I wasn't finished, but the little bit I had, and he started to refer to the sermon that I even had. He said, I believe that you had to live this sermon before you could actually preach it. So we talked some more throughout that night. And he, at the end, he said, you know, I really, really think you need to go pray about all this. So I went to my room and I started to pray that God would forgive me for all the lies that I was believing. And I started rebuking every lie, every name that the devil had called me. And I asked God that he would remind me of all the names that he calls me and that he calls us. And after praying and weeping and crying to God, I, just, I realized what my name really was from thinking that I was unworthy, not good enough, unable, pathetic, and lost to the names that he has given me to call anointed, unappointed, and a child of God. You know, I'm here to say to you to stop living in the lies that the devil keeps telling you. Stop living in the lies that, like he told me, stop living in the lies that you are useless, that you're not good enough, you're junk, worthless, a loser, and stand up and take the authority that God has given you and start to live by the names that God has given you. The names are redeemed, loved, called, an overcomer, 
more than a conqueror. Stop believing that the lies that the devil has told you. Remember, he is defeated, and start walking the names that God has given you. <clears throat> you know, the devil may come against you and say that you can't do it. You're not strong enough. But in the Bible it says in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. You know, when the Bible says that we are stuck in our past, that we'll always be what we were, and 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, thing, all things are become new. You know, the devil says that we're not called by God. But the Bible says in Jeremiah 1.5, Before I formed thee in thy belly, I knew thee. Before thou camest out of thy womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordain thee a prophet unto the nation. When the Bible says, or the devil says, that you are not free, that God didn't do that, in John 8.36, it says, If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. And when the devil says that God doesn't really love you, he doesn't care about you, well, let me tell you what the Bible says. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever, that whoever believeth in him should not perish, but have an everlasting life. For everything that the devil says, God says something different. Just start living by the names that he has called you. And I really do believe that there is someone listening tonight that is struggling with the lies and the names that the devil keeps telling you. And in the name of Jesus, stop believing every lie and every name. You know, just like how my father sat there listening to me pour out my heart while we were in that storm and everything was going crazy, the Heavenly Father will sit with you in the middle of your storm while you pour out your heart to him. You know, if you're struggling with the exact same thing I was, I'm telling you, God can set you free right now. But you have to make the choice of what the names you're going to live by. Let me tell you, it's not going to be easy. And no one said being a Christian is going to be easy. But stand up and live by the name that God has called you. Last question I'm going to ask you. What has the devil stolen from you? By the lies that he has told you. What is, what is he what is he stolen? Did he take your peace? Has he taken your joy? But maybe you're like me and believe to the point of we're going to quit. Or you have never stepped into God what he has called you to be because of all the lies. I mean, really, what has the devil taken from you? And like I said before, God can set you free tonight. And you can start walking in the name that God has given you, that he has called you by. But all you have to do is make a choice. How are you willing to make that choice? I'm going to go ahead and pray. Thank you, God, for giving me the opportunity to preach, God. God, if, you, if there is anyone here that is believing the lies that the devil has called them or is giving them, I ask you right now that you would set them free, God, and give them the ability to walk in the name that you have given them. God, I give you all the praise and glory. I ask you to touch everyone now in this line. Amen. Amen. That was a powerful message, uh, Brother Tyler, and appreciate you coming and sharing that tonight. We never want to take for granted that anybody listening doesn't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So I'm going to say a prayer. If you repeat it after me and you're sincere in your heart, then tonight you've made the best decision of your life. It goes like this. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I come before you right now. 
I recognize I'm a sinner and I realize I need a Savior. I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you came to earth and died on the cross for my sins and you rose again. I ask you to come into my life. Forgive me of all my sins, everything I've said, did, and thought wrong. I ask you to wash me clean in your blood. From this day forth, I choose to follow you. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer and you meant it, you have to be sincere. You can say that prayer all day long. If you're not sincere, it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. You can't say that prayer and go back to living exactly like you were. There has to be change. I encourage you to get into a good Bible-based church. If you don't know where one's at or have one, we can help you find one. Surround yourself with good, solid believers. We have a Bible for you and some literature to help your new walk with the Lord if you accept Christ tonight. Maybe you didn't say the prayer. Maybe you wished you had it or you've got some questions. You just want to talk to someone. Maybe have somebody pray with you. Just give us a call or a text at 816-729-6649. We'd love to hear from you. We'd like to encourage you to give us your address. We can put you on a mailing list to get, uh, get you some CDs on a regular basis. Uh, I'd also like to encourage you to download our free mobile app, our testimonies, messages, our schedule. It's all updated daily. Just go to your app store on your uh, iPhone or Android and download it. It's totally free. We want to thank Sister Catherine Ferguson from Catherine Ferguson Music uh, for sharing that song with us tonight. You can find her on our link page as well. Just want to thank you for joining us here at Extended Hands of God Highway Ministries tonight, and God bless. <laughs>